today we're gonna be going over the um pretty much how to install and everything for an Arduino Uno based uh plasma cutter CNC table. Um first thing you're gonna need to do is go to Arduino.com and go ahead and install the Arduino IDE. I'm not huge on those text files. Um, don't get them, they suck. You don't know what you're getting. Um, you're gonna go to the GitHub, the websites, a little confusing I guess. Um, up here, when you click on the website, this is their home page, just what it brings you to. Right now, go to code. And then when you hit master, clone or download, download zip. Let's just go ahead and do that. Alright, so you're going to install the IDE. This is not a tutorial on how to install the stuff. So pretty much when you get the downloaded file, where is it? Right click, extract all, and I get, no, I'm going really fast guys. I recorded this like five times, um, kept on using wrong format on OBS. So what you can do once you download it, extract it, and you can go into it. Hit Gerbil Master, Gerbil Master, Gerbil, and then this config h, config dot h file. It's what you want. You don't need any C plus plus. Uh, program to open it you can do it right here in um right in notepad so um let me find it really quick so right here if I click on it uh, mine's line 247. Um, read this, it pretty much says uh, this is the paragraph for the variable speed, uh, spindle speed. If you disable it, it's pretty much on off and it switches D11 and D12. That's what we want. So we're going to go to this one. And in order to accommodate, just do two slashes, space, file, save, go ahead and exit out of that. We're all done with that. Um, I'm going to go to Arduino. After this, I'm also going to show you super quickly. Um, in Fusion 360, how to use the CAD CAM to um, pretty much make a little G code. It's only going to be a little circle. So, right, you're going to go to Tools. Um, make sure you have the Arduino Uno selected and your COM port. Mine happens to be COM8. Um, to include a gerbil upload into your examples, you're going to do include library, add zip library. It's going to load up. I have it in downloads. I already have it in my example, so all 
Alright, um, downloads, Dribble Master, and then you're going to hit this Dribble right here. Man, part odd. I am having a hard time clicking today. And then just go ahead and click gerbil, open. I already have it, so it's going to throw me a bunch of errors. And then once you do that, you can see I already have mine open, but. So, go to examples. And then if you scroll all the way down, um, examples from custom library, gerbil, gerbil upload. Go ahead and give that a click, verify it, and upload. Um, gonna save a little time and just say, I'm not gonna do it. To double check, you can click up in this top right hand. Serial monitor, um, make sure you have 11.5200 set as your baud rate, um, and that'll pretty much tell you you've successfully installed gerbil. Alright, let's go ahead and close out of that, and let's open up. Fusion 360. I'll have to edit this out. In order to show how to generate some G code, I'm just going to there is one more thing you have to do after this, or before we generate it. Um, not a huge deal. Right, okay, and let's go ahead and you don't need to extrude this. I'm pretty sure. But I like to do a quarter of an inch. Okay, and that's what we are going to cut out. We're going to go ahead and go into our cam. We're going to do a setup. So we're going to do a cutting. Um, one thing is I have my Z facing up. I would strongly recommend doing that. Hit the error preferences and it's somewhere in there. i um, going to have to figure that out. I don't really care about the stock. Is it okay? I'm gonna do a 2D profile, select our tool. Um, like I said, I haven't built my CN or no, I didn't say it in this video. I haven't built my CNC plasma table. This is just one thing I, as I'm going into it, I feel like a lot of people are gonna get stuck on. Um, and honestly, right now it's just kind of been cakewalk, but we're going to install the Mach 3, um, Mach 3 post-processor, and that, that had, I, I haven't had a problem with it, of course, I don't have my the CNC table built, but running it on UGS, um, it hasn't had a problem so far. 
Uh, what what you need to do is compensation type, change it to computer. That is very important. Let's go ahead and say OK. And then hit post process. And then, in order to get the pros or the processor, you want this load up. See this little blue uh, link down there? Go ahead and give that a click. Um, I'm not going to have any links in the description. It's not that hard. Type in Arduino, uh, Gerbil, or Google. It's first website that pops up and then oh is my internet crapping out okay there we go Oh, it's weird. So we want water jet laser plasma. Um, go ahead and download the Mach 3. I did try to do the gerbil laser, and even though it says for water jet laser plasma, I haven't been able to get it to work. Um, go ahead and let me know. In the comments if you have so if you hit download you see this Mach 3 plasma CPS so it is downloaded the way to add it add these three dots or I'm sorry hit setup open the folder and then right here you're going to see all your post, post process and then easy way go up to downloads um, let's see cut copy whatever go back and paste I already have it in here and then you might need to restart Fusion, but if you can also try this refresh, and then what you're going to do is so for all normally CNC mill, um, you're just going to use a basic gerbil. But if we go to for cutting, you can see gerbil's not there. Uh, gerbil laser is. That's because, like I said, I tried it. I couldn't get it to work. We're going to go with the Mach 3. And then I pretty much everything's good. This G0 is a pretty much jogging um so it'll cut really slow and then i'll pick up the plasma cutter and move really fast to where it's gonna cut i went ahead and turned that off Man, I can not type today either. And we're going to head and post this. Um, let's just do it to my documents. I use, I personally use um, Universal G Code Sender. Um, you can obviously use any G Code Sender you want. So there we go.
generated the G code and I'll get this camera switched around so you can see make sure I have 5 volts so as you can see a pretty easy setup um, pretty much I have my positive lead on my voltmeter hooked up to D12 and the ground to ground Decide to open it. Um, like I said, mine's COM8, so go ahead and hit open. So I can do an M3 command. Uh, that should be spindle on clockways. And you see, I have roughly 5 volts, 4.98, close enough. Um, M5 would be turn it off so M5 now I have 0 M4 would be uh, spindle on counterclockwise but it doesn't matter you can see M4 gives me 5 volts too let's go ahead and turn that off um, these are just kind of the base settings the only thing I've really changes the x and y rate so this isn't so slow Go home. circles dot tap that's one I saved on my desktop let's go ahead and visualize that Um, really quick, I know this is going to be a pain. I want to make sure you can see everything. Okay. Well, I'm sure you can. Now, for some reason, I don't really know what it's doing. It gives me a G70 code, but that's before any cuts or anything. So I just kind of ignore it. Um it could it might be something if you have a torch height control. Um I plan on not doing it that save a little bit of money see how it works if it doesn't work no big deal just go ahead and uh you can add on to it uh like i said there's that g70 code but it's before any cuts so i just ignore it and hit resume but keep in mind or keep a look at the voltage so right now we have zero. It's gonna go to one of these red lines. Um, I think it's gonna go to this one first, and it'll say five volts when it hits the line, and then it should go back to zero when it's done the cut. This is like a real time representation of what you should be seeing. So five volts, zero. Five volts around. Uh, one thing is with the Moth Three, um, post processor, it does not return to home once it finishes the cut. Um, if you have a CNC mill, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, basic gerbil. 
gerbil, gerbil, whatever you say. Once it's done the cut, it'll go back to the home position. So in this particular model, it was the middle right there. So the bit would go back to the middle. Alright, the video actually cut a little short. So I'm going to go over a little bit of how I plan to build my CNC. Um, it, it's really a trial. I'm not going to say this is the best way to do it. I'm going to be trying to use 3D printed parts. Um, right now I have PLA printed everything. Um, for the people not into 3D printing, PLA is pretty much not very good against temperature. So I have some PETG uh, filament I can use if any of these um, things fail. So pretty much what I'm going to plan for the driving mechanism is actually a gear drive or chain driven, not gear drive. Sorry about that. So this is a T25H25 um, chain. It's pretty much a bike chain. Loops around it. So there's that. And then I have my idler pulleys, which are pretty much things I printed off. And then I pressed in a skateboard bearing. Um, I got a pack of 100 of these for like $15. Um, yeah, so they're really not expensive. The reason why I'm trying all these printed parts is because they cost me 20 cents to make and buying a metal sprocket or yeah would probably be it. for an idler like this without the bearing it probably would be about $20 and that's just guessing um I did do a lot of teeth on my driver sprocket just because I was I'm not really concerned about accuracy the less teeth the less it's gonna move with one rotation of the stepper motor um but the less and less teeth you have the less teeth the chains riding on at once so if you have a six tooth <laughs> Sorry about that. If you have a six tooth drive sprocket, um, it might be one, two, or three teeth. When if you go around half of this, it's probably one like twelve. I think this is a uh, thirty two tooth sprocket. So um. A lot of you won't be able to do this. Um, I did this with my CNC mill. You can see my CNC mill. I only have a half horsepower uh, spindle on it. So it, it, it actually worked pretty well on the outside. But then you can see I broke a bit over here. And then... Uh, the spindle wasn't spinning fast enough, so it started skipping teeth and just did not come out very good. Um, but this is another NEMA 23. These are the ones I plan to use. I think it got them 23 bucks. So it fits like that, and then it's going to have that drive sprocket. Um, and then, here, let me go over what that, the rest of the video is about. The five bolts, that's all for the relay. Um, it's got three points for a five-volt input, your signal input, and then a ground. 
Um, so five volt, you're just going to connect that to the five volt in um, your Arduino. Uh, and then for the signal input, you're going to connect that to your D12. So every time it goes on, uh, shoots five volts, the relay is going to click on. And then pretty much engage in plasma cutter and disengage when it goes off. So that that's pretty much what the first part of this video is about. Um, let me grab a. So. I'm gonna grab a drive spot too. So pretty much this is gonna be how the chain drives. This is gonna be on the side. And then I'm gonna have a chain come in this way. It's going to go on the bottom of these idlers, up and around. So, boop, 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 down, and around. So that's pretty much how I plan to move this. Um, this was designed after these little linear rails I built, like I said. Um, Having a little bit extra is actually important. You'll see why in just a second. Um, same skateboard bearings as the idlers. So, I don't have this adjusted right now. But... Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that. So this plate's going to go on like that. Hang like that. On it. In it. And then it's going to have my stepper motor on the top. And then the rest are for pretty much my gantry. Across for the uh, x-axis or y-axis. And then, let's see, for the box itself, built, building the control box, I'm going to have a video of that uh, coming pretty soon. Definitely see if you can pick up some of these, I think they're called aviation plugs. Um, you can see it has four wires. So pretty much this part would be on the side of the box. And then when you unplug it, you're going to have the wire that goes to your stepper motor on this side. So on the box. And then it has a little groove so you can only plug it in one way too. So if you unplug it, but this is also a really good sail safe, fail safe. So if you step on the wires, you're not gonna rip them out of your driver, motor drivers. Um, in order to drive the motors, I'm just using these Amazon, um micro step drivers really nothing special they go up to four volts i think um a peak four volts or or rms or what you actually get is 3.5 or max um both of my stepper motors only go up to uh 2.8 
And actually, because I'm going to micro-step it so much, the more you micro-step, um, the more times the current changes. Uh, so the, if you micro-step it 32 times, I think it goes up to, um, pretty much this will get hotter for the higher voltages. So even though my steppers are rated at 2.8, I might find them at the 2.5 setting. Um, you don't really need to max it out. And then for cooling, I got these little fans and I, uh, I guess I shouldn't say little, little, they're uh, 220 millimeters, so they're like big desktop fans, and then printed off some of these fan guards, very, very cool, I did not make these, um, or design these. And then, let's see, also, my, uh, I'm not going to be building it. I have a good friend that um, owns a fabrication business, so depending on whatever he says, um, pretty much, if, if he allows me to film, I'll either give you guys a little video of me assembling and welding everything. Um, if he doesn't, honestly, they're, they're not super hard. If you know how to weld, and you can weld a 90 degree angle, shouldn't be that hard. Um, one thing is, I'm going with steel. Um... Because, like I said, I have a buddy in the fabrication, um, so I can get all the steel I need it need for around sixty dollars. Um, uh, aluminum would be nicer. It's not gonna oxidize as quick, um, but money-wise, I'm really this is kind of a try, a trial. Um, I'm not really expecting great results, I guess, but I am. I don't know. It should work, but um, so with steel, um, uh, the price is gonna be dramatically reduced. Um. I'm going to have to paint it, probably, because with a plasma cutter, you usually have a plasma table um, that's going to be filled with water, and steel and water don't mix, obviously, so I'm probably going to paint everything. Um, it kind of might make these linear rails... If they're riding on a painted surface, go up and down a little bit, side to side. But, um, like I said again, it's a plasma cutter. You don't really expect pinpoint accuracy. Maybe in, like, the millimeter, half millimeter, um, accuracy range. Um... So, I don't think it'll really be a problem, but we'll see. I'll, I'll keep you guys updated.